and they counseled them to be burned alive. Now watch this. So the king told his men to prepare a fire for three days and three nights, very interesting, in the king's furnace. There were um, just 900,000 men, just everybody in the whole town came that, to see this, okay? Um, when he was brought out, the sages that predicted a usurper to the king, remember the ones that told the king about the star and all that? They cried out and told him that this is the man. But when Nimrod asked Terah if this was the same child that was killed because of the prophecy, then Terah blames it on his oldest son. He says, he's the one who told me to do it, which was a complete lie. Okay. Um, but Haran was double-minded in his heart. See, what was happening was he was starting to believe what Abram was saying, but he was still kind of worshiping the other gods. What does God say about double-minded? Doesn't work, does it? Uh, he believed Abram by his God, but never took any steps to follow and serve him. So Nimrod condemned him to death in the fire also. So then um, they stripped them all of all their outer garments. See how it parallels with Daniel 2 and 3. And bound them hand and feet and cast them into the furnace of fire. But God came down and delivered Abram. But Haran died, for his heart was not perfect before the Lord. So there were 12 men that did the same thing. Remember those guys that, that heated up the furnace so hot that the 12 men... Well, the same thing happened there. Um, and Abraham, uh, Abram walked in the midst of the fire for three days and three nights. See that? It's the same parallels. When it was told to the king, he came down and saw Haran's body burned, but Abram was still alive walking around. The king ordered his men to take him out of the fire, but it was too fierce. Again, he had eight men that tried to get open the door. and So, so he says, would you please come out? <laughs> so Abram comes out. <laughs> When Abram came out, he gave praise to God for keeping him alive in the midst of the fire. So the princes and all the people tried to worship Abram, but Abram told them to worship God, the maker of heaven and earth. The king was so in awe that he gave him presents, and he gave him Eliezer, and, and, and a guy named Onai. And this is just speculating, okay? But Onai is not mentioned in the Bible. And I was just speculating. I was just running with a few things. But I looked up Onai, and it mean, it's, it, the, the name is in there, but it's not a name. It's just what it means. Um, it means pain and punishment that we afflict on ourselves, whatever that means. But Eliezer is the God of help. Now, if you follow the story of Eliezer, you'll see that he's a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. When Isaac was um, going to take a Gentile bride, we'll get into that. But he's a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. And he is also, it says in Genesis 24, 2, the eldest servant of his house, the eldest servant of Abraham's house. Um, and he's from Damascus. And he says, who ruled over all that he had. Now, who else ruled over all that, that the master had in the Bible? Just types and shadows. Joseph. So I see that as a type and shadow. I, I just see these little connectors. So I'm, I'm trying to connect the book of Jasher you know, I don't, I don't want to say it's the inspired word of God, but I want you to see how it's all these little connectors. And then also I was thinking, you know, if there were two servants and they both went, I thought of Orpah and Ruth and how Orpah turned around and went back. But, and, and so maybe Onai turned around and went back because he didn't, he's not in the Bible. So he did not go with Abram. Okay, so then another interesting story, and then we'll be done with this, um, as far as the book of Jasher. So Abram goes away from the king in peace with many gifts and the people, and even 300 people went with him. Okay, so the Bible does, does uh, verify that. But when Abram was 52, Nimrod had a dream. He saw Abram coming from the furnace with a drawn sword. The king ran, and Abram threw an egg on his head, and it became a river. The king's troops all were drowned by that river. What does that sound like? Pharaoh and the Red Sea. But the king fled with three men and escaped. These men were clothed in king's robes. While they were fleeing, the river turned back into an egg, and from this egg a bird came forth and plucked out Nimrod's eye. The king had a wise servant named Anakai, and he told Nimrod that this was a dream about Abram and his seed that would come against you in the latter days. As for these kings, you will escape with these three kings who will be with you in the battle. Three kings and Nimrod. Remember, Nimrod is a type of shadow of the Antichrist. So I put together the four horsemen. Doesn't that sound like it? The river, the egg, and the bird means that Abram and his seed will destroy you and your people in the latter days. Okay, now we read that, but I want to show you, remember where it says in verse 28, it says, Haran died before his father Terah, died in the land of his birth in Ur of the Chaldees. Well, if you look up the word before, 
The word is panim. And it's um, connected to anger because of. So read it like that. Haran died because of his father's anger, you know, in the land of his birth. So that was that connects the two of them together too. Um, just a little note, you notice that when we read it, uh, Sarai was barren. She had no child. Well, there are seven mothers that are barren in the Bible. Do you all know who they are? Aunt, well, oh, we doesn't say Anna. Right. <laughs> right. She was just serving in the temple, but it didn't say. No. No. <laughs> All right. You got Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sevens are always important. Remember that. That's the type of the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a signature of Him. Okay. You got Sarah. You got Rebecca. Rebecca. You got Rachel. Manoah. And Hannah and Michael and Elizabeth. And so I took these and I looked up. Uh, Sarah has Isaac, which is the son of promise. Okay? And then you've got Rebecca, um, which has uh, Jacob, contender with, with God. And then you've got Rachel that has... Um, uh, my mind just went blank. Oh. <laughs> um, um, Joseph. May he add, and then you've got Manoah, which has Samson, and that mean his name means sunlight. And you've got Hannah, that has Samuel, which means heard of God. And Michael is David's wife, and it says she's barren and she doesn't have any children. Period. It's not that her womb was closed for a, a special purpose like everybody else was. Her womb was closed because of disobedience, her ugliness. David, remember when David came? Remember when David came and danced before the Lord when the ark was coming into the mm -hmm. to Jerusalem when they went and got the ark and they brought it and he danced before the Lord and he took off his priestly robes, I mean kingly robes and he danced before the Lord mm -hmm. and it says his wife looked out the window and she despised him. It was Saul's daughter mm -hmm. and God closed her womb, boom, just like that. So she doesn't have any children. And then the last one's Elizabeth. And, and she has John the Baptist, which is a voice crying in the wilderness. I'm always going to be leery of, like, Genesis 5, how all those names. <laughs> I even looked at it. I tried to find something about what we just read because we read that such and such begat when he was such and such. I'm looking. You know, there's the, the Bible doesn't have anything in there by mistake. So you've got to look at what the Holy Spirit's trying to say. So I'm not going to let that catch me off guard again. <laughs> so anyway, I just saw that. And um, again, I'm going to ask why Abram. If you turn to um, Acts 7, um, Stephen has some very interesting insights that are, that are nowhere else in the Bible. And one of the in interesting insights that he has is he tells that Abram was still in Mesopotamia be um, when he was called by God, when, he, when God appeared to him, before he went to live in Haran. And so, um, and, and so he went forth from the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. And from there, after his father died, God transferred him into this country which you're now dwelling. So I'm just kind of, I want to break down every little thing that, we're, that this says. You know, we're looking at partial obedience, right? Because God told Abram to go from the land that you live in, right? He also told him to leave his relatives. And he also told him to go where I tell you to go. Okay, so he's partially obeying. You can see partially. So he's not fully trusting. He left Ur, but he did not leave his relatives behind. They went with him. He did not go to Canaan. He went north. I'm going to show you where um, Haran is in comparison to Ur. It's in the <coughs> opposite direction. Um, and it wasn't until after his father died that he obeys God. And that's approximately, uh, scholars believe, it was about five years. In order for God to tell Abram the plan and to bless him, he had to separate himself from evil, from sin, because that's where he lived, right? All right, see here, right here, this is Ur, this is Babylon, and this is Haran, okay? And down here is Canaan. So he went up the river, and he didn't, he didn't go to Canaan. 